Good evening, everybody. Uh, I know that there is a great deal to talk about. I know there's a great deal to remember. I know there's a great deal to think about this evening. Um, I'm Jonathan Brent, uh, Executive Director of the EVO Institute for Jewish Research, and it's a great pleasure to welcome all of you here. There's a great deal to talk about because we are going to think about the work and the life of a truly great man, uh, a man who was not uh, uh, necessarily recognized as truly great during most of his lifetime, but he is among those few people who maintain the sanctity of human life and the human spirit, whatever that may be. And so this is a very important evening for us in our commemoration of Yom HaShoah, and we are commemorating today the work, the life, the spirit of a great man who saved many, many of us who are in this room and in the room outside. And I would like all of those who are either survivors themselves through the uh, work of Sugihara or children or relatives to please stand up. Because I would like to recognize all of you and, uh, and understand that this is not simply a uh, program of historical value. It is a program of immediate importance for many of us. With us this evening uh, are some very, very special guests. Chihiro Sugihara, grandson of, uh, of the man uh, we will learn about in this film, is with us tonight. Mr. Sugihara, please stand up. <clears throat> Uh, Chelin Gluck, uh, the film's uh, very, very talented director, is here with us. Uh, Chelin. And we have with us, and I believe in the room outside, uh, a man who was instrumental in making the work of uh, Sugihara known to the world. His name is Mordecai Paldiel. He was director of Yad Vashem Righteous Persons Department in 1984 and uh, prepared the materials which made it possible for Yad Vashem to recognize officially the work of Sugihara. So he's outside, but... I wish to recognize also Hiroyasu, Hiroyasu Tanigaki, uh, consul uh, from the Japanese consulate in New York. Julius Pranavicius, uh, consul general of Lithuania. Yolanta Witkowskaitia, uh, vice consul of uh, Lithuanian consulate is here. Then uh, Naoki Kobayashi and guests who are from JTB USA, uh, otherwise known as the Japan Travel Bureau, are here. <laughs> Ruth Levine, who is uh, co-chairman of our board, is here with us this evening. Irene Pletka. Uh, who will be speaking in a moment from the EVO board, is here. And I believe Arnie Richards, uh, who is also from the EVO board, is here this evening, though perhaps in the other room. Um, and I wish to recognize uh, Eddie Goldwasser, who is a member of the EVO staff. I don't know if Eddie is with us this evening, but uh, she is a... Uh, an archivist in the Evo archive 
whose family was rescued by Sugihara. The ties between the Yivo Institute and this noble rescue operation are deep, not only because of members of our board and members of our staff, but also leading members of the intellectual community that YIVO stood for before the war in Vilna, Poland, now Vilnius, Lithuania, and outside in the exhibit that has been prepared of materials in our archive relating to Sugihara um, are the um, uh, travel documents, hotel cards, uh, certificate uh, of railway uh, tickets, uh, as well as the, uh, the visa that was granted to Yeshaya Trunk and his wife. And Yeshaya Trunk was a leading uh, a Jewish uh, intellectual of his day in Poland, a member of the Bund, and also the archivist of the Ivo Institute, whose life was saved by Sugihara. The uh, discovery of these materials in our archive was due to the work of one of our archivists, Vital Zaika. And so I want to recognize his, uh, his effort because it was not apparent when we first conceived of this evening, we asked, do we have materials relating to Sugihara? And the answer was no. And then Vital said, well, you know, I think I saw something in one of the archives of, in one of the sections of the Bund archive, and sure enough, he found it, and he found a wealth of material there. And the Evo, our, the Evo Institute is a resource of tremendous, tremendous, tremendous treasures of this sort. I want to thank the members of the Evo archive and exhibition staff for preparing the lovely exhibit of these materials, and I invite all of you to go and see this uh, before the evening is done. And now I want to introduce Irene Pletka, uh, a member of the EVO Board of Trustees, who will uh, offer her thoughts and recollections about Sugihara. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, so Everybody's story is personal and close to them, so I will share with you my story. Um, on September 1st, 1939, my father was hiking in the Tatra Mountains when the war broke out and there was a general call-up. He went back to Warsaw and discovered very rapidly that the Germans were rounding up all intellectuals and shooting them, and so he decided to leave for Lithuania. He crossed the frontier illegally and uh, got a job at a newspaper in Vilnius. This was, in fact, a great lifeline because Lithuania was the breadbasket of, of Eastern Europe and you could send packages from Lithuania to the ghettos in Poland. So I have postcards from my grandmother uh, saying how the coffee help them survive another week, another month. And all of these, as I say, are tremendously personal uh, events. However, my mother was very nervous about the situation. And um, in January 1941, they were able to get visas, Sugihara visas, transit visas to Japan. Now, getting a visa, in fact, wasn't the whole story. You had to pay for the ticket. You had to get into the interest office with 250 US dollars and uh, get a ticket, but if you were found on the street with dollars, you'd be shot. So that was one hurdle to cross. Another was to get a seat allocated on the train. Uh, and there was a list, and again, the Soviet authorities uh, played games with that, but the truth of the matter was that everyone that I know who got a Sugihara visa blesses the memory of Kyune Sugihara, 
because, in fact, this was a man who saved all our lives, our lives and our children's lives. I wanted to share with you another small anecdote, and that is in 1998. Uh, I was in Israel for the 50th anniversary of the founding of the State of Israel, and I happened to meet um, Mrs. Sugihara. She was uh, being taken around by very well-meaning people from San Francisco who were honoring diplomats who had saved Jews, but unfortunately none of them spoke Japanese and she didn't speak English. So she was somewhat bored. And we met and I realized that in fact the, the Sugiharas had been sent from Kovno to Berlin and she, that she spoke German. So we spent several hours talking and her major concern was what happened to all the children? And I was thrilled to be able to tell her that we who came as the dregs of Europe uh, with nothing actually flourished, succeeded beyond anyone's wildest imaginations. And all of that was due, in fact, to this saintly man, Sugihara, who, against the wishes of his government and uh, at great peril to his career and his family life, did this tremendous deed of signing these transit visas, uh, which saved about 6,000 people's lives. So uh, I truly, I was sitting next to uh, Mr. Sugihara's grandson, and I want to say on behalf of all of us uh, who survived due to your grandfather's acts, May his memory be blessed. Um, so as a, as a very small uh, gesture, uh, we wish to leave. Uh, Mr. Sugihara with a gift from the Evo Institute, which I think you will find uh, very interesting. Thank you very much. Yes.